Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and today we are going to be doing this practice worksheet on proofs, and these proofs involve angle, angles and segments. So let's take a look at what we got. On this uh, first question, it says, given the measure of angle AHB, so AHB is congruent, let's take a look at this, this is AHB right here is congruent to CHD, CHD. So that's what we are looking at. So AHB congruent to CHD. And we got to prove that AHC, this whole one, is congruent to BHD, that one right there. So let's work with this and see what we can come up with. All right, so first, as always in proofs, we are going to start off with and we're going to do this as a t-chart proof. So we are going to put in our statements here and our reasons in here. So let's go ahead and see. Okay, so what can I say? Well, first thing we always do, as you know, is we're going to fill in the givens. So we're going to put step one, and we're going to write in angle AHB is congruent to angle CHD, and this is our given. All right, well, what can I say from that? Well, there's not much I can say. Um, we can say that angle AHB is equal to angle CHD by the definition of congruence, but as far as where can I go with this, there is not much I can do. So let's take a look at what we are trying to prove. Well, we are trying to prove that AHC is congruent to BHD. So that's what we're trying to prove right there. So what can we say about AHC? That's where we have to end up, see if we could say something about that angle. Since I can't do anything with this one further, what can I do with this one? Well, I know that AHC is made up of AHB and BHC. So we know that these two angles in here make up the whole thing. So let's go ahead and state that. So we're going to state, let's uh, do step two here, and we're going to state that the measure of angle AHC is made up of the measure of angle AHB plus the measure of angle BHC. And this is by angle addition postulate. So we're using the angle addition postulate that tells me that these two make up the whole thing. Well, in the same reasoning, we can say that the measure of angle BHD is equal to the measure of angle BHC plus the measure of angle CHD. And that's all segment addition. Well, now what can I do? That's the next step. We're always thinking, what can I do next? Well, in this case, let's see. Since I know that CHD is equal to AHB, I can put that right in there. So if I substitute that right in there, now I have AHC is made up of CHD and BHC. So let's go ahead and make that substitution step. But before I do that, notice how these are angles and congruence. I need to change these to be measures and equality. So we're going to write from our given step, we're going to say for this step three, we're going to say angle. the measure of angle AHB is equal to the measure of angle CHD. This was just a technicality and it's the definition of congruence that allows me to change that. Because now I can go ahead and do that next step I was talking about and we're going to go ahead and do this substitution step right here. We're going to put these two in for each other. Okay, So now we're going to say the measure of angle AHC is equal to the measure of angle CHD plus the measure of angle BHC. This was substitution. Now, what can I do next? Well, I still need to somehow have 
AHC and a BHD. I have a BHD, but I can't relate these at all yet. But what if I try to get rid of that B H C. So I'm going to try to get rid of this B H C by subtracting so that and then I can substitute it right in there as well. So I'm going to subtract that over. So we're going to say the measure of angle B H D minus this one, the measure of angle C H D is equal to the measure of angle B H C. And this was just subtraction property of equality. So now I want to put this whole thing into there. So we're running out of room here, so I'll continue it over on the other side in a second. So for step six, we're going to go ahead and say the measure of angle A H D Sorry, that should be the measure of angle AHC, this one, is equal to the measure of angle CHD. Now we're going to put this whole thing into that right there. So we will take this and say plus the measure of angle BHD minus the measure of angle CHD. And this, again, was a substitution step. And now, you, substitution, and now you can see I can subtract or simplify right there. So let's go ahead and finish it right here. So step seven, those go away, the measure of angle CHD. So we're just going to say the measure of angle AHC is equal to the measure of angle B H D and this was a simplification step and then step 8 will just change these back to congruent so A H C is congruent to angle B H D and this was definition of congruence alright moving on to number 2 so let's go ahead and move this up and take a look at number two. And number two, we're given that segment AB, let's go ahead and put segment points on these. So A to B, this is congruent from C to D, right there. They tell me that there's some congruence there, and then we need to prove that AC is, is congruent to BD. So AC, this segment right in there, right here, AC congruent to segment BD. All right, well, again, if I just start with AB, I really can't say anything. If I start with CD, can't really say anything. So this is kind of like the proof we just did up above, and that if I start with these two givens, there's not much I could say. So let's look at what we have to prove. Well, we gotta prove something about AC. Okay, so what can I break AC down into? It's made up of AB plus BC. So let's go ahead and use that as our second step. So let's go ahead and make our T-chart. And we'll put in the statements here and the reasons here. And then for step one, we're going to write in that given AB is congruent to CD. So segment AB congruent to segment CD. And this was step one, and that was a given. Okay, so step two, we said, all right, for this one, we're going to, since we couldn't conclude anything with AB, we're going to go ahead and see what the where we have to prove. We have to prove AC, so we're going to say in step two that AC is made up of AB plus BC, and I'm going to do the same thing for BD. BD is made up of BC plus CD, and this is segment addition postulate. All right, so now, this kind of becomes like the other one. How am I going to relate these? And before I can even relate them, let's go ahead and change this. Since we're at doing addition, we're going to change this AB segment to say AB equals CD. And again, this is just the definition of congruence. 
All right, so now we're back here, and let's take a look at our next step, step four. So what we're going to do in step four is I want to somehow relate these BCs and kind of maybe get rid of them. So let's go ahead and state that AC, oops, AC is made up of CD plus the BC, okay? Because this was, this is what it was, and this was, was my AB, so I put it in there. So this is by substitution, and then I'm going to, substitution, I can spell it, and then I'm going to go ahead and say that just like we did up above in the previous proof, I'm going to say that BD minus CD is what BC is. Okay, so all I did was subtract the CD from each side. So this was subtraction property. And then what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and make that substitution. So that substitution will be right here, BC, and I'm going to put this in for it instead. So we're going to say that AC is equal to B to CD, sorry, plus BD minus the CD. This was substitution. And then step seven, these CDs will simplify out. So I'll get AC is equal to BD, and this was simplification. And then let's go up over here and finish this off. And we're going to say that AC is congruent to BD. And this is step 8 by definition of congruence. All right, let's move on to proof number 3. So let's move this up, take a look at what we have here. And we are given that the measure of angle 1, so this one right here, plus the measure of angle 3 is 180. Oh. Okay, so if I add up angle 1 plus angle 3, I'll get 180. Okay, and then I need to prove something about angle 2 and angle 3, that those are equal as well. All right, so let's start with our T-chart here. And we are going to put in our statements and then our reasons on this side. And let's go ahead and see what we can end up doing. So for this one, I'm going to say step one, which is the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 180. And this was my given. I probably should have done that in black so you could see that it's the same. Okay, and then step two. All right, well, what can I say with one and three? Well, it's not much I can conclude that they're 180. That's great. So let's look at what I got to prove. I got to prove something about the measure of angle two. Hmm, measure of angle 2, and i got to prove something about the measure of angle 3. Okay, so what can we say about 2? How can we relate 2 and 1? Since we have a 1 right there, is there any way to relate 2 and 1? And yes, there is. I know that this is a straight line, and this angle forms a, this forms a linear pair. So we could say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 form a linear pair, and therefore we know by definition and our theorems that a linear pair must is supplementary and must equal 180. So I'm going to just do that all in one step and say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is 180. And you can say that this is by definition of supplementary. You can also put, I will, I will accept if you put linear pair here as well, okay, because we know and we've talked about it and we've shown our theorems that linear pair means they're supplementary, which means they're 180. So we can say it that way. So then step three, look, this right here is 180. This is 180. So they're both 180. Since I could say it as A equals B and B equals C, that means A will equal C. That's just straight transitive. So we'll go ahead and say the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3, and that's a transitive step. So now what can I do? Well, look at I could subtract out those angle 1s, and I'll end up with the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3, and that's a subtraction step, and that's exactly what I had to prove 
right up here, that the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3. All right, so now let's move on to our final proof over here. Moving this up, and let's see what we're given. Over here, we're given that angle 3 is supplementary to angle 4, and angle 4, supp supplementary to angle 1, sorry, angle 3 is supplementary to angle 1, and angle 4 is supplementary to angle 2. Okay, well, we know since they're supplementary, they're 180. I can go ahead and say the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 1 is equal to 180. The measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. I, there are several different routes to take on this. You could do it mathematically with the numbers, or I'm going to actually do it a little bit different, though, this time on this. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, let's make our T-chart, and let's put in our statements here and then our reasons right there. The reason I'm going to do this one a little bit different, again, many of you will want to say angle 3, the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 1 equals 180, the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180, set these two equal to each other by transitive, you could substitute the 1 and 2 because they're vertical angles, and then you end up proving what you got to prove. That's fine, that's perfect. But here's what I want to do, because I want to do it a little bit different using a theorem that you just learned. And that's the reason why I'm doing this, because I want to introduce this theorem that you learned. So we're going to say the measure of angle 3 is supplementary to angle 1, or actually we'll just say angle 3, sorry. And angle 4 is supplementary to angle 2. And this was our given. Okay, so now here's what I want to do with this. Uh, whoop. I'm not sure what just happened there. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to say that right here in step two, since, well, let's go ahead and do the vertical angles right now. We're going to say that angle one is congruent to angle 2, and we saw this right away because these are vertical angles, so that's something I can say right away. Vertical angles are congruent. Now, again, let me rephrase. You could do it this route, set the two equal to 180, so that means these two are equal to each other, use the vertical angles, subtract it out, and you get angle 3 congruent to angle 4. That's perfect. That's fine. But Again, I'm stressing that I'm trying to do this a little different to show you this theorem. So the next step would be angle 3 is supplementary to angle 2. It was supplementary to 1, but 1 is congruent to 2, so I put that in, and that's substitution. And now I'm done with the proof. So step 4, I can say angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And why can I say that? Well, this is the theorem that we had learned that's called the supplements theorem. And let me explain to you what this supplements theorem is. It says, if two angles are supplementary to the same angle or congruent angles, then the angles are congruent. So that's what our supplements theorem is. And we've gone ahead and proved this proof using that. But again, let me show you the other way. If you said this, you would have had to say the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 2. And now you know that 1 is 2, so you could say the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2. That's your substitution equals the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 2. And then you can subtract that out, and you get 3 equal to 4, so 3 will be congruent to 4. That's another way to do that proof. So, again, there's always more than one, not always, but most of the time there's going to be more than one way to prove something. So hopefully these uh, examples helped. Good luck with your proofs.